gone through all the scientific evidence. We've combed through all the best studies. In his very long Twitter thread on why he doesn't eat meat, he listed 10 different studies looking at meat consumption and its effect on longevity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and even dementia. Every single one of these 10 studies relies on questionnaires for its data. Here's an example of one of these questionnaires from Cambridge University. Do you really think you can accurately remember what your average use of bacon was for all of last year? This is a common talking point in the pro-carnivore sphere. They disregard observational studies claiming that food frequency questionnaires are inaccurate ways to assess people's diets because people apparently can't remember what they ate a few weeks ago. But that suggests they have a complete misunderstanding of what these questionnaires are meant to assess and how they're used. You don't need to remember what you ate at a specific meal and they don't need to be 100% accurate to be used. What they need to be able to do is separate those who regularly consume a food from those who don't. For example, in the Harvard questionnaire, I would check the box for apples under one per day. Is there maybe the odd day where I don't eat an apple? Sure, but it's close enough. And similarly, those who rarely or never consume apples will likely tick the box for rarely consuming them or consuming maybe one to three a month. And if they're a little off one way or another, it's not a big deal. We can still assess the differences between someone who regularly consumes apples versus someone who occasionally or rarely does. It's highly unlikely that someone who rarely or never consumes them is going to tick the box suggesting that they eat them every day and vice versa. And even if the odd person did that, these studies often encompass tens of thousands of people so it won't skew the results. And something that the critics almost never mention is that these questionnaires are typically validated, meaning they've been tested before being used in these studies. They'll have a smaller group of participants fill out these questionnaires and then researchers will actually track their diets at various points over time using a variety of methods to make sure that their true diet lines up fairly well with what they reported on the questionnaires. And at the end of the day, we see that results from observational nutrition research, which uses food frequency questionnaires, line up pretty well with results from randomized controlled trials, as long as the studies are using similar populations and testing the same food or nutrient. So if we consider randomized controlled trials as the gold standard, which there can be some debate about, but he and others often suggest is the case, then observational research can be quite reliable and food frequency questionnaires do just fine. And the same people who criticize observational studies for using food frequency questionnaires are often pretty quick to cite these same types of studies when it suits their bias. One study from 2020 found that breastfeeding mothers who ate more omega-3 fats like DHA tended to have babies with bigger brains. 